we'd like to introduce you to three of your fellow employees. Meet Karen. Karen's a marketing account rep who has been with the company close to seven years. This is Mike. He's going into his fourth year as a splicer. He came up from San Francisco on a transfer. And then there's Linda. Linda's a services technician who transferred from an inside job about two years ago. All three have one thing in common. Each of their jobs require them to frequently operate company vehicles. Let's join Linda on the way to her first customer. It's only Monday and they're already handing out 10 hour loads. It seems like everyone has to move at the first of the month. I have company coming over tonight and if I have to work late, I'll never get things ready in time. Well, worrying about it won't get the orders done. Man, is he in a hurry. If I drove like that, I'd be out of a job. That's all I need. I'd better get this thing off the road. It's driving like a tank. Things can happen at the least opportune times. Linda has a lot of work to do, and the last thing she needed was a flat tire. Prior to the blowout, Linda had a lot on her mind. A big workload, company coming over, and the guy who went racing by her. Even with all those distractions, Linda was still driving defensively. Let's check some of the things she did. As she pulled onto the road when leaving the garage, she signaled her intentions, checked carefully for traffic, looked left, right, and back to the left. She saw her lane was clear and pulled out smoothly, accelerating to the speed limit gradually. Along her route, she kept her eyes moving and checked her mirrors regularly. By doing this, she spotted the car moving up from the rear. When the other car started around her, she removed her foot from the accelerator and placed it over the brake. That gave the other driver a little extra space, and she also protected herself in case he cut in too soon. When the tire blew, it didn't make Linda any happier, but she kept her cool. She immediately took her foot off of the accelerator, pumped her brake slowly, held the steering wheel firmly, put on her turn signal, and pulled safely to the side of the road. We'll leave Linda for now, Besides, I don't think we want to hear her thoughts. Mike has started out for his job site. He didn't have what you could call a good morning. Five lousy minutes late and the boss is a fit. You'd think I was some kind of a criminal. How'd I know the bridge would be up? Then after chewing me out, he tells me I delivered the wrong material to the job site. If he would have given me the right print, they would have gotten the right material. No, he says, it's my fault. So now I have to pack it up and deliver the correct equipment. This is going to be a great week. Whoa, that fool pulled right out in front of that car. <laughs> if I didn't have enough room, I would have creamed that poor guy. Us bike riders ought to know they have the same responsibilities as anybody else on the road. Mike also had a lot on his mind, but the good driving habits he developed saved him from a major accident. He used the two-second rule and kept a good space cushion all around his vehicle. Even though he was upset, he was still in total control of what he was doing. Let's leave Mike for now. Hopefully things will start to look up as his day goes on. Karen's on her way to see a very important customer. They're interested in updating their system and have a lot of questions about our equipment versus the competition. Karen's responsibility is to answer those questions. I sure hope things go better today than they did the first time I met these people. That woman was as cold as ice. It felt like she's looking right through me. Hey! I had the right of way. Can't you tell your left and your right?
Sharon's client seems to be her major concern, but she didn't let her appointment affect her driving. She kept a good space cushion, kept her eyes moving, and checked her mirrors regularly. Once she was at the intersection, she tried to make eye contact with the car on her left. When she couldn't, she didn't assume anything. She kept her foot over the brake, and sure enough, she had to use it. Right of way, left of way, whatever, don't assume anything while driving. Let's check back with Linda and see how she's doing with that workload. Fantastic. 12.30 and I've already knocked out six hours of work. If I keep this pace up, tonight will be no problem. Better watch these guys on the left. Cute kid, but his aim needs work. Linda seems to be in complete control. She has removed some of the pressure from earlier in the day. You can even see a mood change. Even though relaxed now, she's still on her toes. While scanning the road ahead, she saw the play area and immediately slowed down. That's when she saw the two boys. By staying alert, she was able to spot the soccer ball and had plenty of time to stop. She used her common sense and prepared herself for any potential problems. Linda provided an excellent example of defensive driving. Let's get back to Mike and see if things are getting any better. Well, today's turned out a lot better than I thought it would. The way the morning went, nothing would have surprised me. Another couple of hours and I can pack it in for today. Great, the longest light in town and it just turned red. My brakes, where's my brakes? Come on, catch! I knew I should have stayed in bed today. Well, I better call the boss. Mike seemed to be calming down from his eventful morning just when the unexpected jumped up again. Fortunately, Mike reacted like a true defensive driver. Even though he was having a bad day, he kept his mind on driving. As he approached the intersection, the red light irritated him, but he kept a good space cushion anyway. So when he lost his brakes, he had time to react and avoid rear-ending the stopped car ahead. Let's look closely at how Mike was able to avoid disaster. When he applied the brakes and there was nothing, he immediately pumped the brake pedal. Sometimes you can build up enough pressure to restore good braking action. As he continued to pump the brakes, he shifted the car to its lowest gear, which helped to slow him down. When the brakes still didn't catch, he pulled out the handle for the emergency brake and slowly depressed the emergency brake pedal. This started to stop him, so he pulled to the right-hand side of the road and turned his wheels into the curb, which finally brought him to a stop. With Mike's mind on his driving, his reactions were fast and logical, thus avoiding damage to himself, the vehicle in front of him, and the vehicle he was driving. There is one thing we feel is very important that Mike didn't do. He didn't turn off his ignition. If he had done so, it would have locked his steering wheel, which could have been disastrous. Keep in mind that most of the new vehicles being manufactured have locking steering wheels. If you turn off your ignition, you can rely on your steering to lock up. Karen's arriving at the end of a long day. Let's drop in on her and see how it went with her client. I can't believe it. She wants a new system. That lady amazes me sometimes, but I guess that's why she's so successful.
Oh, no. This is great. What a way to end a day. A car overheated, stuck on the side of the road, and no phone in sight. Karen really used her head. When her car overheated, she didn't panic and stop in the middle of the road where she might have been rear-ended. Instead, she slowly started braking and turned on her emergency flashers so the other drivers could see her. Once she was safely off the road, she lifted the hood and tied a handkerchief to the mirror, which would tell a police officer she needs assistance. Leaving the car would not have been a good move. Since there were no phones in sight and really nowhere to go, Karen's decision to stay with the car was a good one. Her wait wouldn't be long. You have seen parts of a day for three of our employees. Their days were not typical, and hopefully yours will always go smoother. But the things all of them encountered can and may happen. So when you drive, think defensively. The difference is you. Pacific Northwest Bell. This program has been a production of the Audio Visual Center.